Hey guys, hope you're all doing great. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to speak about the 2022 Formula One season. Just over, uh, obviously, some very positive, some more difficult time for others. Let's say with, uh, let's start with Max Verstappen. Uh, 15 wins out of 20, two races, absolutely incredible stats. Uh, that's the most wins over one season. Uh, it used to be 13, now it's 15. We had a great fight for P2 in the Driver Championship um, until the last race where Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez got to the last race with 290 points each and it was the one that was going to finish in front of the other that was going to be a vice world champion that lasted until the last red lap of the race uh, which was awesome to see then we had Mercedes okay so Mercedes came uh, as team world champion uh, they had lost a year before uh, for different reason uh, to uh, Red Bull and Max Verstappen in the Drivers' Championship, but Mercedes came and straight away they cover very different from the others. A car that didn't work that well, uh, especially at the beginning. It's actually the first time in Formula 1 since Lewis Hamilton is in Formula 1 that he hasn't won a race in a year, which is an amazing. I mean, which is an amazing is that he won a race every single year he was in Formula 1 up to that date. So Mercedes um, really struggled early in the season, especially with the bouncing the car or porpoising, um, but bouncing is easier to pronounce. And then from Azerbaijan, from June onwards, they're starting building back up. They didn't get quite to the level they wanted to, uh, apart from Brazil, where they definitely had the fastest car. And George Russell got his first win in Formula One, uh, which I was very happy with. But they, they got better and better and better through the season. Talking of that way, I think for next year, for 2023, Mercedes should be at the front with Ferrari and Red Bull. That's what I'm hoping. I just want to see that uh, every weekend we get a nice fight between those three big teams and see who can win the championship. Um, talking of Ferrari, probably the most prepared team going into the season um, because they gave up in 2021 early on the development of their car to focus on 2022, just like Haas did. Uh, same ID and they started the season very well. Reliable, fast, um, so Leclerc definitely over the first three races took a huge advantage. For me, he was going to be world champion. I think for most of the people, he was going to be world champion. But then things started going uh, going badly. So Red Bull, Red Bull that had a reliability issue came back and, and they also had a fast car. They put some pressure on Ferrari and Ferrari made too many mistakes. You know, I love Ferrari. It's, it's that iconic brand, but pit stop and strategy weren't always on top. I think Charles was trying to, to play the catch up game in the championship and he made a couple of mistakes, one in Imola, one in France, just trying to uh, get back to uh, to Max Verstappen. It's always hard when you fall behind and, and you have to, to catch back because you try to go 105% and that doesn't always work. Um, Ferrari took in Ferrari, big changes. Maria Binotto is leaving the team. So who is going to be the next uh, team manager of the team? That's a good question. There's a few names out there. I think we just wait and see. But definitely uh, a big news. Um, I think Mattia did a pretty good job. I think the car was fast uh, through, throughout all the season. Yes, they made mistakes on the strategy and on the pit, but that's, that's not the hardest part to, uh, to correct. That 12 pole position, most pole position of everyone. So they're the fast car. It's just to convert that into Sunday. Carlos Sainz. Uh, pretty good season two, had some win, had some pole position, made early in the season quite a, quite a bit of mistakes on, on lap one and, and spun in Imola and I can't remember, had a, maybe contact another time. So fall a little bit behind uh, on the driver championship, but uh, had a good season. I think Carlos Sainz for me has got a very good understanding of the race. Uh, he sees the whole picture and manages to drive it that way, uh, which is one of his strengths. So definitely that was a, that was a good season from him. I think next year Ferrari is still gonna be strong. I think, uh, as, as I mentioned, Red Bull is still going to be strong. Uh, they did an incredible season. I, I should have started with Red Bull, but anyway, they were so good. We talked about them so much that uh, they just uh, they were kind of their own, own league this year. And that's a very good, strong baseline for them next year. So next year, Red Bull is going to be strong. Ferrari is going to be strong. Mercedes, I hope, is going to be strong. Just behind them was Alpine. Um, Alpine started um, the season pretty well um, you know they they've been they've been around all season long a few reliability issues especially on Fernando Alonso's car but also some incredible performance from Fernando I remember qualifying in Canada where I thought he was going to be on pole 
Uh, every time it was wet, Fernando was, was up there. Uh, he was pushing the limit. And um, Esteban did, did really well too. In Saudi, he actually started one of the races of the red flag uh, on pole um, from all, all the, the, what was happening in the front. So Alpine has been very strong. Uh, they did manage to beat McLaren. I think Mac, what helped Alpine is McLaren had a very, very slow start. And then they did catch up quite a lot. And then Alpine had a couple of really good races. Uh, especially in Brazil where they score a lot of points and that kind of saved them for force in the, in the Constructor Championship. McLaren completely off in Bahrain, absolutely incredible to see how far behind they were in Bahrain and how much they catch up from there. As Mercedes, I think uh, McLaren did a, did a really good job at catching up through the season. And again, I think midfield next year is going to be very tight. Uh, no Fernando Alonso going to Aston Martin, I think it's going to bring a lot of knowledge. So midfield is going to be Alpine, McLaren, Aston Martin. Let's see what Alfa Tori, Alfa Romeo, Haas and William can do. Haas started really well and then they went down. Obviously highlight of the season for Haas. I mean, these, these three highlights for me, this Bahrain, the comeback of Kevin Magnussen, P5. Saudi Arabia, when Kevin was fighting with Lewis Hamilton and, and, and overtaking him for quite a lot of the race. And obviously the big one, the pole position in Sao Paulo, which, which was a bit of a surprise, but hey, you have to use the, the conditions where they're coming to your advantage. So. Has started well, uh, didn't, didn't finish that well, but uh, hopefully they can catch up Alfa Tori. I think they had a difficult car all year long. Uh, they've lost Pierre Gasly is going to Alpine, uh, which was kind of the leader. So now it's up to Yuki Tsunoda to become the leader uh, next to Nick De Vries uh, next year. Aston Martin mentioned quickly, uh, Sebastian Vettel a really good end of the season. Those last three races were the best that he had done for some time. So that was pretty cool to see. Uh, I know they've got a... Fernando Alonso coming. Uh, Fernando Alonso is 40 plus years old, but he still drives like he was 25 with all the experience that he's got. It's amazing to see. Um, Williams, also new American driver, Logan Sargent, next to Alex Albon. Albon showed some incredible performances this year. Uh, didn't score that many points, but I felt like his performances were well, much more than the points that he scored. And Alfa Romeo, same lineup next year. Hopefully they, they can also get back into the mix for the midfield. Uh, they, did a good se they did a good season this year. They, they did manage to stay ahead of Aston Martin, which is pretty good for them. Uh, but definitely next year. Um, with the knowledge from this year. I think all those teams are gonna, bit, are gonna get closer and we're gonna see cars that are a little bit less different. Uh, I think they're all gonna convert to kind of the same uh, philosophy of cars as there's no regulation change. Well, I think that's, that's, that's pretty much it for the season. As always, please subscribe, like, comment uh, the video and um, know all we have to do is to wait couple of months, three months, uh, until we are in the race, the race one of the 2023 season and see if I was right about Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari fighting at the front and the midfield being tight.